Yeah, I'm just trying to talk some stuff out, to be honest with you. Getting the 8th Army, oh, I shouldn't say, well, yeah, primarily the 8th Army, but I've also been looking at the Borsch Army over here. Um, I don't think you're going to be able to see a heck of a lot of what I want to show, but uh, like I said, this is more for me to talk out stuff, because it's just like lots of things I'm learning and um, have to clue in about, like, um, yeah, it's just too much to write, I'm trying to do as much as I can. So yeah, I've changed up the Alberto markers here for the rail heads, just so that way they're a little bit easier perhaps on the, on the way up there on the giant screen uh, from uh, the high vantage point. This is the problem I can remember too. It was niggling around in my head um, as we were advancing further into here. Um, I was like, Chris, uh, man, you're not uh, spending enough time getting, but I had to do, I had to fix so much of the rail here. Um, because way back when, when the 4th Army was, you know, way the hell out in Ostrava and so on and so forth, uh, they wrecked so much of the rail. I had to like, remember that's when the Katowice Conference Agreement kicked in afterwards, after they pushed them back. And there was a whole reworking with the, uh, the cooperation between uh, the Germans and um, the Austro-Hungarians and all that stuff. Um, oh. I don't know where you go, probably here. Yeah, that makes sense. You wouldn't have them on the front. Um, yeah, and part of the deal is they brought some engineers over here and uh, Austro-Hungarian engineers and tried to fix as much of the rail as possible. Uh, with my little wrinkle of um, allowing them to do it, it just takes three times longer because it's, uh, it's not German, I mean, not Austro-Hungarian rail and so on and so forth. Anywho, I don't know if you're going to be able to also see these things. These are areas of opportunity. Um, and I started realizing there's a heck of a lot more areas of opportunity up there than there are here. Um, you know, what I was saying about the rail is, um, God, did I ever screw up uh, with the 8th and the Vorsch Army. There's going to be a ton of supply points sitting here on the table at the end of uh, November. And that's just not a good thing. Um, I can't even move them around to other spots because I, all the rail, there's no no operable uh, rail for me to like do things like the German superpowers. That's how you you take out the German super, superpowers, man. You just make sure they can't uh, access rail to where they, uh, the combat places. So I've got, you know, oh, anyways, well, it's the way it goes. I, I tried as much as I can. I'm trying whatever I can to tell the Austro-Hungarians, you've got to get the hell out of here. I'm really surprised at how much we've wrapped around. If I'm telling you, man, if we were able to get a jerk, well, we've already cut off their line of supply just because of these uh, the enemy zone of control here. Um, as far as I know, cavalry still, uh, it's been so long. <laughs> ah, that's a combat unit, so uh, that's the way it goes. Um, so their line of supply, their line of communication has been cut off from here. Yes, I know they can go this way, but it, uh, that's a double rail. This is uh, m monstrously significant. My main goal uh, for the Germans right now is to try to cross every river as, as much as we can. Um, we'll be able to do it eventually in the Adzanka. I'm not doing any combats here. I really screwed up because I, um, I had to move some stuff in play. I didn't move in my headquarters early enough. Um, but next turn, that's saying that now. Uh, the Russians are in a monstrously precarious position. I didn't realize how badly until I saw this bit. So you got two army headquarters right here. You got the fourth and the ninth uh, potential of uh, getting nailed, like, you know, having to surrender. I don't... I, the Von Salza here over in the fourth army headquarters should have done what Meandry Mike mentioned uh, quite a while ago, uh, basically is in... Is Kelcher really that important? And I said, yes, it is. It's strategically important. We're going to hold on and so on and so forth. And now it's like, oh, my God, I don't know. I, it's, I mean, let's be honest. The odds of, uh, this is the thing, stuck in a rock and a hard place. Uh, do I stick it out now as hard as I can due to the fact that um, it could be a possibility. I have to look into that for the Russians um, because... The 4th Army Headquarters here, Von Salza, is going to have to hobble away um, one hex at a time, just due to all the zones of control, uh, enemy zones of control. 
yep, Kjeltsa allows him to not have to retreat based on the number of um, um, hits. In like it has to be the equal amount of, um, if he chooses to use uh, the, t uh, the urban center as um, defensible terrain. Um, he doesn't have to retreat unless, uh, let's say if you've got five uh, strength points sitting there, um, they'll need to take, uh, inflict, uh, f well, let's say six. Let's make it nice and easy. Uh, you're going to need six, uh, the Germans would need six hits to force them back um, versus two if they weren't in the town kind of thing. So, uh, it's tricky. Um, I am going to make a combat here, and I know I said I was not going to do any combats unless... Um, I can guarantee two hits, but I have to get a move on here. Um, so, and I also can only attack from this spot. If I attack from here, they'll be able to use the swamp as their defensible train here. Uh, they get nothing, no bonus. I got one in six chance of not inflicting one hit and we'll just go from there. I'm also gonna get the eighth army dude there. Um, what's his name? The guy from South Africa. Um, uh, hold on here, I'll get him. Esdorf, Von Esdorf. Um, I'm going to get him to supplies doing sweet PL. Like I said, if I was going to rate myself, I'd give myself a C uh, for the Germans. It's just like, a, it's just a real mess. Uh, they had golden opportunities and I just effed it up. I mean, like, you know, we're going to do a lot here, but I know how, and even due to the fact with this, I just can't get even, even if I started this turn and to rail to these railheads, I still don't have enough movement points. Um, to bring in any Germans or, oh, well, it's not the supply that I've got. I'm flush with supply, it's insane. Like I said, there's gonna be supply points uh, sitting on the table and that's a monster no-no um, for me. Um, yeah, I can't even bring in troops uh, effectively into, uh, to do any combat in uh, for next turn for the Germans, so that really sucks uh, here anyway. So I just gotta go with what I've got and I'm gonna try to rejig, I think. If I bring, I'll have to take a look, but I think if I, I'm able to bring, well, here's a railhead over here too. So I'm gonna, fit, I know they're not gonna be attacking here, but I've gotta, you know, start uh, consolidating my line. They could just do it at the end of the turn, just hop on over here and say, oh, we're gonna be entrenching there at some point. Um, I think I, well, so I'll sp spread the love around over here a bit. I think, well, cause it's so short here, it's still gonna cost me two movement points to bring in here. So there's two, three, four, Five, one, two, three, shit. I think, oh my God, don't do this to me. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, so one movement point, two in train. I, sh I should have kept some people on trains. That's another thing to remember. Yeah, Chris, um, up to the rail. I can have to figure that as well. There's gotta be a way of not uh, being too sneaky as in there's only so many trains. Maybe that is the rail capacity and I can't over uh, overdo that because I'd like, yeah, that makes sense. Because uh, I want to keep some people in, on, like, a, for example, there's a huge amount of rail capacity the Austro-Hungarians didn't use and uh, last turn the Germans as well. I could have kept some people in trained and they uh, would have got that one a movement point um, extra. And let's see if that would have helped. I guarantee it would have, oh, I swear to God, watch this. So if it had already been in trained, one, two, three. I'll have to get off. So that's one movement point. Not because I'm getting off, but because of just the movement. And any unused movement is still considered one. Maybe it's one tenth. So for, let's say if I'm doing infantry. So that's one movement. Two, three, four, five. I can't use column movement, but I've got a movement of five. All right. Now, could I have got somewhere to the front? Yep. You son of a bitch. Because I want to also nail this spot as well. One, two, three, four, five. Yep, I could have helped them out, but I can't now because I don't have anybody in trained. So that's that. Shoot. Uh, what a bummer, man. So that's that for this bit. Um, I'm not even gonna start looking towards over here. Um, but yeah, I think these are, oh, I'm not saying they're gimmies, but if I put an in put in enough strength points, I think I'll be able to force a retreat. Um, of all those positions to be able to take them. That's the case. I then ha now have, a be I've, well, I've crossed the Nyman, which would be wonderful. I'm bringing the cavalry over here. The, I think it's the fourth. Bringing them over to here. 
uh, they're right over near Konigsberg here. I'm going to use that little spit of land. Um, so we'll hop across the Nyman. This will cut these guys off. Excuse me. Uh, which is wonderful. And now I'm starting to wrap around trenches. So it may not be as bad as I thought, but um, lesson learned for next turn. Isn't that neat too, eh? Hist uh, historically, you know, it was always like, oh, they just pull back and they were like, no, no, we've got to slow down here because we're not going, we don't have our logistical, um, uh, you know, um, setup there. And uh, I fell into that uh, trap in a sense. Oh, it was here too. I was like, it was taking, uh, oh well, live and learn, live and learn. That's about it, I think. Pretty surprised I was able to um, keep keep things somewhat coherent. Um, yeah, just gonna, I, it's, it's no more mistakes. How's that? That's the way to look at it. So um, yeah, I'll, this combat will go in. It's a one in six chance. I'll give that a shot, force, force them back and just keep trying to push, push, push. But I can't do anything right now. I've moved enough. Um, there's going to be no combats this turn, next turn, you turn right, there will be. Um, and we'll see what we can do here, rejigging. And I haven't really looked here all that much. Um, but as you can see, I don't have any, what I call uh, areas of opportunity here, but that was the sweetheart. If I could, ju if I had been able to, I think, um, uh, at least uh, put an enemy zone of control on uh, uh, Bial Bialyok Bial B I A L Y stock Bialystok. I'm gonna have to check that up. That's another thing too. I'm uh, gonna be asking my boss to help me out with uh, pronunciation of. Uh, I'm gonna just write down all the French uh, words that keep popping up. Uh, in the war summary and whatnot for the live stream so that way I can um, pronounce them better. I just thought that would be a good idea. And how do you like this? Uh, her husband's Russian. I'm like, this is even better. So I can, you know, hopefully I can use him for <laughs> for like Yal stock or something. Yeah. yeah, why not? Makes total sense. Okay. Slowly but surely, but... Um, I guess maybe it all depends what happens with uh, Von Salts over there. If he decides uh, it's he's screwed, like rock in a hard place, and he's got to stay there. Okay, that's it. We'll see how this goes. I'll go look it up. That's it. Hope you're having a good one.